Now, imagine if we could turn category five hurricanes like Maria into category one hurricanes like Franklin. They would become far less dangerous for humans with this 40% reduction in peak wind speed. And the damage to homes, livelihoods, and infrastructure would go down roughly by a factor of 200. Now, how to do it? Look into the eyes. Not into my eyes, but the eyes of the storms. Maria has a distinct beautiful eye while Franklin is flying with his eye closed. The strongest winds by far are in the eye wall, right next to the eye, where the fierce rotation of the eye meets the inward flow to the low pressure area, which is what caused the hurricane in the first place. Project Storm Fury correctly targeted the eye wall in an attempt to weaken hurricanes. They did cloud seeding in a larger ring by spraying aerosols from about 12 airplanes. They did manage to weaken Hurricane Debbie in 1969, the only storm tamed so far, but their method doesn't work for most hurricanes because they don't contain enough water of the right temperature. Now we have supercomputers and huge weather databases. We've learned that eye walls break down all the time in nature, often due to subtle changes in the turbulent flows in and around them. The aim of this project is to target the weaknesses of these eye walls by artificially generated turbulence. We also know from a completely different context, a fusion reactor, that a vortex's momentum can be diffused by controlling the turbulence. Now, as in the fusion reactor, there are probably many ways to produce the required turbulence because we're basically just disturbing airflow. Options are spraying tons and tons of dry ice or smoke from airplanes or unmanned ships, inserting physical obstacles or doing cloud seeding. We'll do thousands of realistic modification experiments safely and cheaply on the supercomputer until we're confident that we've found efficient and reliable methods. After that, as a result of the project, we'll propose real experiments, starting with hurricanes far out at sea safely, and we'll work towards a future with much less destruction by hurricanes. Thank you. Thank you, Svante. That was great. Judges, you may ask. Thank you, Svante. So how realistic it is that this can be done by, for example, airplanes? Uh, OK, so in Project Storm Fury, which used like a more schematic, more grand scheme, now we're disturbing the local airflow, which is a smaller project than to surround the whole eye wall. And they manage this one storm with specific circumstances that are not often occurring. But that was with 13 airplanes only. And they succeeded twice, two days apart. So when we're going into the finer scale flow, we expect that uh, just a few tons of, uh, of these particles and maybe a dozen airplanes, something of that order. Now we have to research this more carefully. But that would be the scale, roughly. Thank you. Any other questions? I guess it's, a, it's kind of fascinating, and I hope you succeed. <laughs> and great that you're, um, that you're applying machine learning. It's a, such an interesting case. Uh, has, has, can, you, can you move to other sort of geoengineering challenges from, from the way you're structuring the, the data and the, the platform you have? Like, say, fi I mean, fires, like huge fires, it's a, maybe less of a climate uh, a phenomenon. But could you move to other? Um, other big scale phenomena uh, of you know that are for like example catastrophes fires big forest forest fires like how to mm. maybe not with the tools here because we now we're focusing on the flows and the uh, physics of turbulence and flows but there's a lot of initiatives in this weather modification for example my institute Finnish Meteorological Institute is participating in rainmaking in the United Arab Emirates. So there's more and more of this kind of, uh, of initiatives. Thank you. Oh, one question. Yes, go ahead. 
Well, I, I might be, I I'm, don't know anything about this area, really. But uh, I, somebody told me that uh, it's not good that we do this rainmaking and put this particle up there. Tell me about the uh, environmental aspects of uh, changing the weathers in, in this way. Uh, okay, I, I, I read one report by some environmental uh, authority about, for example, silver iodide is one of the used chemicals. The quantities, according to that report at least, were, were really negligible uh, there, or very minute their environmental impact. So I wouldn't say that that's an issue with this research. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. I think that Svante, you are a rainmaker.